Okay, this video is going to go through creating the registration. We're only going to do the interface to start with. Okay. Then the next, another video will show you um, how to do the actual registration. So if we just open up our registration, you'll see that we've got nothing on here. Um, I've got it in, I'll put it in split view again. Um, right, my div's got no ID, so I'm going to put an ID for that. Um, and this is going to be register. Well, I can't think of this one. Register div, I'm just going to call it. And I'm going to put run at server. Okay, just so that I can apply CSS styling to it at a later date. Now, looking at my server explorer, my user table, which is what I'm going to register my details with, is going to need me to enter a login name, a password, and a full name or a user display name. The status, when someone registers, they're going to be a normal user, so I'm going to set that myself. Okay, and the user ID, I'm going to create that myself as well. So I'm going to create a new unique user number. So I only need to ask the person to put three sets of details in. So let's go to our toolbox. So we're going to need a text box. So I'm going to put three of these on. So I need a text box for the login name. I need to put this on the next line down. Text box. Oh, let's just tidy that up a little bit. Blank line first before you put your text box on. Text box for the password. Now, generally, what you do with passwords is you get people to confirm passwords. So we're going to need a full text box. Okay. Now put them all on, and I need to name them all. So I'm going to call the first. It's going to be login name. Tx login name. Tx. Um, Visible name, and then I'm going to have TX password, and I'm going to have TX confirm password. So when we ask them to uh, do it in again, and we'll fix that with validation. Now, if we click down here where it's moaning about the design view that thing, let's just click that. It looks a bit naff, all in a line. I don't really want that. I could fix that with CSS. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a tag in to force it onto the next line. So in my code view, I'm going to put br slash that. That's a line break. So that forces a line break. And I'm going to put one of those copy and paste the, at the end of each line. So they'll sit on top of each other. Okay. Right. Again, still looks a bit naff. Um, what I can do is if I select that one and then hold down control and select the other three text boxes, I can make them all the same length. So if I go to my properties window, oh, this is so annoying. Right, I've opened the properties window, I'll select those four again. So I select the first text box and four. That will show me the common things I can change between them all. I'm going to change the length. Again, you could do this with CSS, but I'm just doing this quickly here. Okay, so I'm looking for width, and I'm going to set the width to 200. That's 200 pixels, so they all get changed to the same width. Okay, the other thing that's a bit naff is I ought to have some labels, really, um, so I know what these boxes all mean. So I'm going to use the label control, and I'm going to stick a label in front of each of these text boxes. So just dropping it in front of the code. So that's four labels. Okay, and if I click on my design view, it should show me those labels. Again, these labels, make sure the properties window is selected first. If I select all four labels, there we go, they're all selected, and I change the width, let's make them all 200. And then it all nicely line up. Okay, now labels, we don't need to mess about with the names. If we're not going to program with them, we can just leave them as their default names, but I do need to change the text. So the first one's going to be 
login name. The second one was going to be screen name. Mm, that's what I should have called the very well. Just thought of a decent name for that. And we've got password. And the fourth label I'm going to set to confirm password. Okay, so just run that just to see what it looks like. <coughs> So by default, if you've got a page selected and you press run, it will run that page. Make that's not too bad. Okay. The other thing I need is a submit button. Um, so if I make a blank line out of that, let's put a button on here. Okay, and I'm going to change its name. So I'm doing all this. Put A to Z on. Doing it all in the properties window, right? So I'm going to have uh, register details. That's what's going to be said on the button. Buttons are great. You can style them to look like anything. And I'm going to change the ID to BT register. Okay. And then that's going to run some code. So well, let's create that now by double clicking the button. Let's create a code that's going to do the registration. Okay. Um, and we'll do the code in another video. Right, let's set up some basic validation for this as well. Uh, so let's start validation. So we need them to enter. So we want a required field validator. Let's just drag all these on first and then we'll name them all. So I'm doing it in Design Viewer just to show you the differences. So we did it in the other video, we did it straight into the code, but I'm just doing where I want to drop it. So I want a required field for the login name. For the screen name, I want one. For the password, I want one. So you've got to put a password in. But for compare, confirm password, I'm going to use a compare validator. Okay, so let's, let's do that one first. So if we look at, we've got the properties window open if the properties wasn't displayed select properties and then click the thing you want to change the properties of so this compare validator let's change the name of it first so bd is what i'm using you can use whatever you want so this is going to be i'm going to call it compare password okay error message has got to be passwords display I want to be it won't matter in this case because there's nothing after the end but I'm gonna put it on dynamic anyway right control to validate is gonna be confirm password but control to compare is gonna be password right so I'm validating this one but I'm comparing it with that one okay so let's just run that and see if that works I'm not going to submit anything but we'll just see if it works the others haven't set up properly yet so we'll come back to those oh it won't it's not happy until I've done it okay so let's do that then so let's set up the other ones first so the login name let's enter a login name so I'll change its ID so I'm just changing each one in turn. So BD um, login name. And control to validate needs to be TX login name. Display dynamic. Let's do the next one. So this is the screen name one. So VD screen name. Uh, control to validate needs to be TX login name because I changed the name of that, didn't I? Came up with a better one. Change display to dynamic and change my error message. So my error message should be must enter a login name. Okay, and then the password one. BT password. Control to validate is password one. Remember, we just we've got a just a required, meaning it needs to be at least filled in must enter a password ok 
Okay, so this is just simple basic. If you want to do anything fancy, you can use extra validators. You can have more than one validator on a control, so you can put extra ones in. If you want to limit it to a certain length of text, you can use um, the compare validator for that, I think. I might show you that later on. Right. Hopefully we've got a valid web page now, so we can run it again just to see it all working. So this is just all the validations for the user interface. I've done this a bit quicker if you, you know, pause it, go back. So if I don't put a login name when I register, I must enter a login name. Oh, for the screen name I've put the wrong thing as well. So if I put one of those in, that should go. Oh, I've been a silly boy. I've done something silly there. Right, so this one is his screen name. Oh, visible name. I used the wrong control. And I've put, I've put a stupid bit of text in there. Let's make that a screen name. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you make mistakes. Well, it does, but as long as you correct them. <laughs> it does matter, but you got to correct them. Right, so let's let's see all the error messages coming up. So it's saying, must enter a login name, must enter a screen name, must enter a password. So let's put a, a login name in. So like, Dave bloke screen name Dave that goes away password let's put password in Eric so if I try and do it now ah, the validation went through all right well, that's not good so let's just see what we need to do okay so for this we add Control to compare that, control to validate, confirm password. So that does that, so it should have worked. What we need to do is put another validation on there, another required one. Okay. Right. So I'm going to give it a massive name. And it's going to validate. Confirm password. Set it to dynamic. Okay, so I've just added two validators now to a confirm password. So it's got one doing match checking. Okay, so let's have a look at that one again. Okay, so that's the match checking one. This is the operation that you can change. So you can change lots of things. You can even look for data types and things. But we just want them to be equal. Okay, this is the default. So let's run it again. So I'll put some details in. I'll put one, two, three, four as my password. Try and register. Oh, I didn't change the text. So let's go back and change the text. Mm, should have spotted that. So the error message should be um, password must must match standard thing that most websites uses the word in. So let's run it again and let's check. So remember all we're doing is building the interface now. Eric and password one two three four. Try and register passwords must match. So if I put one two three five, it's still moaning about that. One two three four it's happy. Okay, doesn't do anything because we haven't got any code. That's what the next video is going to do. Okay.